Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Well, good morning. The Lord is with you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we ask that uh, you teach here. Uh, it's going to be my mouth moving, uh, but it's going to be all of our ears listening and all of our hearts waiting to hear what you might have to say to us. So teach us, we pray. Amen. Hey, the store in Leesdale is under new, new ownership. A family of Sikhs purchased it just maybe a couple of weeks ago. Their name's Dave and Pinky. And I went in to collect my mail, and they were quite excited to find out that I was the local pastor. And so we got talking God. And uh, they said, you have to come to our temple. You, you must come. And so I said, well, you, you got to come to my church. I'd love to have you here. And, and so I'm, when everything sort of opens up again, when they're reopened and we're reopened, I, I'm sure that you'll give them a, a great welcome. And I'm going to go down there. Already been thinking about the fact that I probably should clean up a little bit. Like I won't, I won't be able to wear my my green shorts. Sometimes this is the way that people think about church too, is I should get cleaned up to go to church. Particularly probably should polish myself up because there'll be religious people there and I want to look good or even, you know, tidy up for God. It's a, that's a thing. But it's actually not a thing. God's not fooled by any of that stuff. And so we're going to jump into the book of Psalms. Psalm 100 and, there's 150 of them. We're at Psalms 1 today. But they are, the Psalms, 150 of them, this kind of like, come as you are event. The, it's a little bit let it all hang out, kind of, uh, in the Psalms. There's no try to pretty up for God uh, in prayer at all. They just let it hang. 150 Psalms. These are real life songs and real life poems that have been written by people when they were glad, when they were mad, when they were sad, when they were bad. It's recorded prayers from real people, real prayers, real times. All of them, 150 of them, except for the first two. The first two are kind of like God telling his story before we get to tell him our story. And the, the basic of God telling a story is this one thing. There is a design. God is here on purpose. God has put you here on purpose. God wants you here. God has a plan for your life. And the details of your life matter to Him. But, but this number one thing, there is a design. And Psalm 1 and Psalm 2 are sort of the summary of those designs. One is the Word of the Lord, what God says and then the second is His Messiah, His Word and His Messiah. These are the two major pieces, major pieces in understanding the design of God. So we're on the first one, which is, which is the law of the Lord. And we're saying this, that you can't understand your own story until you've understood God's story. In fact, the human story makes no sense. And if you, if you want affirmation of this, you can just check into sort of the secular mindset. Without a greater story, without a greater purpose on this planet, our little lives are meaningless. They don't mean a thing. We're on a rock hurtling towards nothingness. And in a few billion years, if not sooner, we'll, we'll be done. Toast. It's over. So, Psalm 1 is the story of the Lord communicating in His Word His design through the commands, through the rules, through the law, through the stories, through the prayers. Now, one of you might say, whoa, 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 whoa. what's with the rules? Why does it always have to go to rules and have you? It's like God created this fantastic planet and then says, like, well, this is going to be way too much fun. We're going to have to make a bunch of rules up so people don't, you know, it can't be all just fun and games around here. So God brings down the heavy hammer, brings on the rain to make sure that we're not having too much fun. That, that's not it. That's not it at all. The law of the Lord is more like the design of the Lord. The Bible is telling you how God 
designed the planet the way it was intended to function, the only way it can function. And if you don't get this right, then you wind up ruining the product. It's like using your cell phone as a hammer. It's like trying to weed your flower garden with your lawnmower. It's, it, it would be the wrong thing to do. It, 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 it would break stuff. It would bring destruction. I'm talking about law like the law of gravity, right? The law of gravity. That's just the way God's designed the earth, that mass has this attractive power. It's not like it's a rule that you have to try to obey. I'm here, I'm really trying to obey gravity. It's not like that. It's, it, you don't actually have a choice on it. That's the way it's been designed. The way the planet is designed is gravity. Or like Newton's laws. Newton's laws. I think the first one's something like, an object at rest remains at rest unless acted on by an outside agent. So, like, Newton didn't, like, make that law up, like a 50 kilometer per hour speed limit. He didn't think it up and then sort of make everybody live by it. It's just the way it's always been. Newton was the bright guy that was able to put it into words and help us understand the way that God had designed the planet. But you get it, right? He didn't write the law up. He was just revealing what God had put in place all along, right? He discovered it. So the Bible tells you the design of God, the way it was intended to be for us, for you, for me, for, for human beings, for planet Earth, it helps you and I go with the grain. With the grain. And someone begins to talk about people. Well, it begins, if you read it again, it begins to talk in some ways about people who choose to go against the grain. It's kind of worded a little different. Blessed is the person who does not who does not walk in the way of the wicked, who does not stand in the place of the wicked, who does not sit in the seat of scoffers. These are people going against the grain. <clears throat> They're fighting the design. They're fighting the designer. And so Psalm 1 points out the fact that there's two ways to live your life. There's a blessed way and there's a wicked way. The blessed way is like a tree that you know, it's planted by streams of water and it, it bears fruit and its leaves don't wither and everything it does prospers. It's, it's a blessed life. <clears throat> the other life is, is a wicked life. It's, it's like chaff. Chaff is a, is a thing that grows up in the, like the husk of a seed. It grows up alongside the seed. It looks like it's maybe important, but at the end it's revealed to be <clears throat> useless, worthless. And that's really the summary of a wicked life, one that rejects the design of God, it, it's, it's useless. Therefore, the Bible says, therefore the wicked will not stand in the, in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. Right? It's, it's, this, it's this picture with the wicked that, well, it's like an ancient picture of community. People would all gather at significant moments, and they would all gather at, in the city gates or in the, the downtown core, and, and what's being communicated here is that in the end, a wicked person won't be allowed into that. They won't stand with the righteous. They won't stand in the judgment. They, they'll be cast off. It's, it's what wickedness does to you. It's not that righteousness does that to you. Wickedness alienates you. It makes you go sit in the corner and, <clears throat> and actually worse. So it's pretty simple. There's two ways to live your life. Either fruitful or you're useless. Either blessed or... You're wicked. Pretty simple, right? It's pretty clear. Which is awesome, except that there's a problem with that. And the problem is that the Bible is super clear about this, that we're all wicked. None of us makes the grade. You were thinking, yeah, gosh, golly, I'm going to choose the blessed way. That's what I'm going to treat. I'm going to suck in all that moisture. But the Bible tells us that all have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God. Not one is righteous. Not one of us makes the cut. So, <clears throat> what, do, what do you do with that? You know, that's kind of a, that's a big problem. Well, you won't be surprised to know that the design, the designer, has in the book a solution to this. And the solution is that, that if and when human beings can't produce this righteous life, a deeper law goes into effect, and the deeper law is the love of the lawgiver. It's talking about Jesus, that God himself would come and make things right, who would open that door again to being life. It's, it's Jesus. In fact, Psalm 1 talks about this tree planted by, 
by streams of living water. It's, it's hard not to think back to Genesis 1 that talks about the tree of life and realize that that was Jesus way back then. Tree of life. Here's the hope for a wicked world that we could go to Jesus who came to us and, and laid his life down on the cross and humiliated all of the powers of darkness that have been tossing us around like rag dolls and gave us his spirit and gave us back the job, gave us back our status, back the opportunity to be a tree of life, to live a blessed life, right? This is the plan, that we would have this thing planted, tree planted. You know, all of that is actually all caught up in that one word, planted. You know, the Bible doesn't say, blessed is the person who plants themselves by streams of living water. That's that's not it at all. Psalm 1 says that, you know, blessed is the person who is planted, is a tree planted by streams of water. And what that means is that you didn't plant yourself You're powerless to make this all work for yourself. You got some power, you got some responsibility, but you're powerless to make this someone else. Someone else picked the spot. Someone else brought the spade and someone else dug the hole. Someone else put you exactly where you are on purpose. You're planted. It's an act of God. It's something that that Jesus does that. You You should know this. You are planted in a good place, right where you are. I know, I know it's June. I know it's 2020. I know it feels like maybe you're drying up a little bit, but God has you where you are on purpose with a plan. And now in Jesus Christ, you're able to drink up the good stuff around you. Maybe you're like, I don't know where to start, Andrew. How would I get going on that? Wait, there's a three month reading plan about David who lived his own vibrant life, thanks be to God. His own vibrant life where he was a tree planted, not of his own doing, by the living God, put in a good place. Three-month reading plan. You could find some friends to to read that with. I would commend to you, uh, it's a practice I've gotten into, about praying the Psalms through every month. I read this morning in a book about a monastic movement where they do the Psalms, all of them, 150 of them, every day. So not so much that for us. But every month, you could get your way through the Psalms and you could learn the songs and the poems and the heart of God's people and really, and of God. You can plant yourself, well, you can't plant yourself, but now that you've been planted, you can send those roots down deep, right? I love the image of it being a tree. Tree isn't something that you build overnight. Tree isn't something that grows in a month, not even in a year, but in time, trees become these sort of majestic, I'm going to call them creatures, right? And they, they uh, provide shelter and shade for the little creatures and they provide food and they winter, you know, they handle storms and they reach higher in the summer. That's my picture for you, this picture of a tree. Not so the wicked. Not so the wicked. I don't know if you were listening to the pattern that God lays down about the wicked, but <clears throat> there's definitely a progression. You know, blessed is the person who does not walk in the way of the wicked, who does not stand in the company of the wicked, who does not sit. There's this kind of like, yeah, I'm just walking. I'm not, everything's all good. I'm not making any choices here. I'm just walking with these people. I'm I'm not making any commitments, right? And am I just standing here? Not a big deal. Don't put the squeeze on me yet. And then I think I'll, I think I'll have a seat. And then, wham, it's like you could almost not see it coming. But it's clearly Psalm 1 is a warning. Don't live a useless life. And if you find yourself in the middle of a useless life, if you're looking at the trajectory of your life and saying, this isn't going towards being a tree, this is going towards being chaff, I'm just going to be blown away, it's worthless. If you find yourself there, you can actually go to the tree planter and say, Jesus, could could we work on a different story for me? Would it be, could it be that you would allow me to be a tree planted by streams of water? Would you do that for me? Absolutely, that's, that's a possibility. Here's the point of Psalm 1. Both of those lives are available to all of you. You can choose a blessed life. Or you can choose a wicked life. You can choose to be a tree. Or you can choose to be wind-blown waste. It really, Psalm 1 is saying, it's in front of us. 
right? You get to choose. The psalm ends like this, For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. So your life is watched. And not like in like Monsters, Inc. You remember that scene in Monsters, Inc. where I don't even remember what her name is, Roz or something like that? And she's like, I'm watching you, Wazowski. I'm wa- always watching. Not that. Not like God's watching you, waiting for you to get into trouble. This is more like a dad who, just before he goes down to bed at night, maybe dad and mom, they sneak into their daughter, their baby daughter's bedroom, the nursery. And they just stand there for a minute and they dream about what her life might yet be. Just like a mom <clears throat> watching her boy ride his bike around. Look, <clears throat> no training wheels, right? And she is dreaming about, thinking about what kind of man he is going to become. That kind of watching. That's, the, that's what the eyes of God on you is like, right? It's not, it's not getting you into trouble, not at all. It's more to do with dreaming about what's to come for you, longing for good things for you. In all they do, the last line about trees is, in all they do, they prosper. What does that mean? Are we in danger of sort of telling people, trust Jesus and get rich? Not, not at all. Let me, let me read to you from Eugene Peterson. He uh, says this in the book, though, A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. He says, prosperity in the Hebrew understanding has nothing to do with big insurance policy payoffs. It has nothing to do with overwhelming bank accounts or stockpiling weapons. Not at all. Prosperity... The root of it in Hebrew is the word for leisure. Leisure. It's the relaxed stance of one who knows that everything is all right. Because God is over us, God is with us, and God is for us in Jesus Christ. It's the security of being at home in a history that has a cross at the center of it. It's the leisure of the person who knows that every moment of our existence is at the disposal of God, under the mercy of God. Okay, so that's where we're at. Our start into the Psalms, Psalms 1 question is, one question, what do you choose? What's your choice? You're going to live a blessed life, ask God for that. You're going to live a wicked life, try to make your own way, right? Are you going to drink up the book, lap up the law of the Lord, or are you going to waste your drinking on something that is far less worthy. Are you going to go with the grain or are you going to collect splinters? Let me pray for you. <clears throat> God, these kinds of moments, they can be transformative, right? In, in the twinkling of an eye, a human being, because of the power of your spirit, can choose to change. It's not that they change <clears throat> completely overnight themselves or in an instant, like all of a sudden they're completely different in their behaviors, but you say that they are completely different in their nature. When a woman, when a man turns his life to you, you say, wham, they're made into a new creation. Move from chaff to to a tree. And so I pray that today would be a day, it would be a tree planting day. I pray that you would break out in our region and that you would allow that people listening to this message and maybe by the influence of the message even, by the power of Psalm 1 and its writer, Lord, that people would choose life, more life, your life, and that their lives will be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Your friends, go with this blessing. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God the Father, friendship of the Holy Spirit, be with you today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Amen.